finally ready. You good? All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the Harrisonville Cass R9 School District is to achieve excellence in education. All right. Moving on to a uh, preview of the agenda. As presented. Okay. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, uh, consent agenda. I would like to remove um, item E. I have some questions. All, all of the items on item no, E? No, just, well, no. Just, just information. Right, but I wanted to ask some questions about a principal report. Okay. I just had a question concerning the attendance because I noticed one of your goals is to bring the attendance percentage up, which is great. So my question is, is the Wildcat Academy attendance factored into the high school building attendance? Yes, and so does their attendance, um, it, I notice it's not broken down. So how does that affect your attendance? It brings it down. That was my question. So is there a way that we can um, change that so it doesn't affect the high school attendance? No. They'd have to be made a separate building in Core Data, and there's quite a it's bit still to go high through school. to do that. J we are Wildcat attendance of 73% Dan, 70 something like that, so it does, but the numbers are smaller too, so in the overall right. attendance it's not going to have as much of an effect, but it is much smaller. But just as an FYI, um, we've begun we've begun the process of, of looking at attendance. We've had our second meeting, Dan has with that, and uh, today with administration, and um, so uh, we're we're uh, we're looking at that, and addressing that in a in a in a more in, uh, intense way. Okay, I just had to see the so. high school pan panel penalize. Because of that, right? But unfortunately, they don't have any they're control over it. Right, but unfortunately, they are. Right. And and you know, as was brought up today, many of the students at the Wildcat Academy are there because of attendance issues to begin with. Mm. So, but unfortunately, they are high school kids, so they have to be counted into the high school. So, attendance. approximately, how many students are there at the Wildcat Academy? That, I mean, do I don't know. Well, some go half day, some go full day. So, the total number I could say off the top of my head, I'd have to go back and look. Also, on the flip side of that attendance coin, um, yes, there's our attendance issues, but that does help our graduation rate. Okay. In those cases, we graduate high school, we can True. That okay. Well, good. Good. Around 40 is a rough number, yeah, okay. and then there's, huh? I think that is right. Yeah, around, around 40, and then there, there's a couple different programs that add some numbers okay. to that. Okay. All right. Well, as long as it brings our graduation rate up, that's good. All right. We need a motion. I move to accept the consent agenda as reported. Second. Okay. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Moving on to, let's see here, student recognition. <coughs> yes. Um, are you doing the yep. recognizing? Mr. Wiggins is here to make some rec recognitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Down at the bottom. <laughs> Just hand it over to Kathy. Yeah. There, there, there it goes. goes. <laughs> 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 
Good evening. Uh, we thought tonight we'd recognize our um, fall All-State students who uh, got All-State honors. We thought we'd have more this evening, um, but with us is Peyton Holden, so I'll introduce Peyton first. Peyton, uh, earned Missouri All-State Choir, and I'm going to read to you what Mr. Matthew wrote about uh, Peyton. It says, for a student to earn a spot in the Missouri All-State Choir, he or she must be amongst the very best from a wide sample of singers. The first step in auditioning for the All-District Choir, the rest of all the high schools, regardless of size, from the western state border up through I-70 and down to Butler, over to Boonville and down to Warsaw. That includes roughly 55 high schools in what we call the West Central District. Those high schools send their best singers to the All District Choir auditions. We see about 100 sopranos, 100 altos, 80 tenors, and 90 basses each year. The top 50% of those folks make the All District Choir. From there, the All District singers audition again to represent the West Central District in the All State Choir. Again, there are about 45 of each voice part that audition. From those, we take just four of each voice part into the state level choir and two more as alternates. So from the approximately 200 singers that made the first cut, just 24 are taken to the All-State Choir. In Peyton Holden's case, he's one of the four tenors that are actually going to the choir, not as an alternate. <clears throat> so he out sang about 75 tenors to earn his spot. The All-State Choir rehearses during the last week of January during the Missouri Music Educators Association Conference at Tantara with the event culminating with a concert on Saturday, January 27th. So Peyton Holden, All-State Choir. <laughs> <clears throat> Zach Austin, who's not here, Zach was accepted uh, all state uh, band masters, all state band on December 2nd. Thousands of musicians across the state auditioned for this group and only around. Um, just over 100 students are accepted every year. Zach made ninth chair trombone, which means he's the ninth ranked trombone player in the state. To make all state band is considered to be the pinnacle of a student's efforts in high school band. All state groups perform at the MMEA conference in Osage Beach on the same Saturday in January as choir. Uh, football, we had Nick Cruz earn All-State honors. Nick Cruz received the All-State football honors recognized by the Missouri Football Coaches Association for the second consecutive year. Uh, Nick is also an All-District, a two-way MRVC All-Conference, and All-Class County recipient. He was voted as one of the four candidates for the Bobby Bell Award, which goes to the top defensive lineman linebacker in the KC metro area. Nick was also voted as a member of the KMZU Dream Team. And in soccer, we had four All-State recipients. Seth Wiebush, who was a senior. Seth earned first team All-State honors after being named the 2017 Player of the Year for Missouri Class 3 KC Region. Seth's the new school record holder for both single season and career assists and has tied the 18-year old mark for goals in career with 118. Additionally, he was named to the United States United Soccer Coaches Association All Central Region Team, which consists of top players throughout the U.S. and Midwest. Connor Bletlinger, who's a junior. Connor was selected first team All State. He's the new school record holder for goals in a season with 48. Connor scored at least one goal in all postseason games but one, and Connor was named the Defensive off Team Offensive Player of the Year. Brody Pitts, junior. <clears throat> Brody earned second team All-State honors after being named the 2017 Goalkeeper of the Year for the Missouri Class 3 KC region. Brody and his defense accumulated 15 shutouts this season. He was named the team Co-Defensive co Player of the Year. <clears throat> Alex Bearden, uh, senior. Alex was selected Honorable Mention All-State. Up until his season-ending knee injury, Alex was the anchor of the defense. After the injury, Alex continued to exhibit leadership and serve his teammates as a player slash coach. He was named the team co-defensive player of the year. Mr. Coleman says that these young men played a vital role in the team's success this season, both on and off the field. Their leadership, work ethic, and talent were recognized and appreciated by their own teammates and opposing players and coaches. And they were all very deserving of these honors. So seven All-State. Awesome, fantastic. On the ball. All right, uh, audience delegation. No, no, we're not. Uh, MSBA delegate report. Yeah, it's going to be very, very light today. Uh, you probably all got in your email this week the application for the annual Board of Distinction. I've forgotten the exact name of it. Uh, we actually earned this. In, I'm sorry. Outstanding board. That's it. Thank you. Outstanding board. We earned this in, I believe it was 2013. 
And then, <clears throat> then I left the board and we didn't earn it anymore. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions there. I did not have a chance to dig deeply into it. Uh, Bing and I were discussing it a moment ago. And I think if I, I did skim it, and I think that there's a, a require. I don't think we qualify is the point I'm trying to make. I think we've got, it will be next year before we'll be able to actually qualify because there's a three-year component. Interesting stuff and something we certainly should strive towards as a board, and I think we've got a, a board that's of the caliber to do that, certainly. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Last week, the uh, legislatures from Cass County, all the state representatives and, the, uh, and Ed Emery um, <clears throat> presented their tentative agendas for the upcoming legislative session. Not much discussed uh, about education at all other than uh, it sounded like, and he didn't say this directly, but I got the impression from Ed, and you, you were there, you correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but got the impression from Ed Emery that he's going to try to push forward again with the, uh, uh, the bills he was pushing, the education savings accounts and that sort of thing that he was pushing last year. But other than that, everything else was about to hold on, get ready for some shiny new taxes. Uh, that's my take. Nothing else from me. Rarity. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, good concert good last week, too. Thank you so way. much. All right. Uh, donation acknowledgement. Per board yeah. policy, KH, the administration hereby reports to the board um, that the receipt of a donation of $2,000 from community community members and robotics mentor Tara Ordneal and her company Salesforce matched the $2,000. Salesforce integrates philanthropy into our day-to-day -day business through the one-to-one-to-one -one model. 1% 1 of our technology 1% of our people's time and 1% of our profits are donated to worthy causes. The Harrisonville First Robotics Team is an example of a fantastic STEM-focused program that Salesforce loves to support as it brings more students a hands-on experience with technology, team building, and leadership that will serve them well in the future. The district is extremely grateful for this donation. So it actually totals $4,000. All right, uh, moving on to the Good Neighbors, Strong Community. Yes, we have a speaker here, Jerry uh, Miller, president of the school board at Belton, is here to talk to us today. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for letting me give you some time. Lindsay. So, um, I'm a Belton graduate, and I know most, Dan, most of you may know that Belton and Ray Peck are uh, arch rivals. Bitter rivals. They usually <laughs> don't like each other. Um, <laughs> however, on a rare occasion, there is a time for rivalries to go away. And this project, I believe, is one of those. Thank you. So, I can talk about you. I don't know that much. Just, I'm not much of a podium speaker. I'm long as I'm a podium. It's your class. Your, your <laughs> Do what you need. Do what you need. So, what we have done is team together. We're putting together what we're calling a good and strong community. It is a... Oh, yeah, I got one. Okay. Um, it is a community effort that we're putting on at Raymond Virginia High School for this year, and it is in February, and we are trying to tackle some very big things, um, mostly suicide prevention, uh, suicide prevention, mental health issues, and, and, and uh, all of this. We have four key speakers uh, coming, keynote speakers. We have breakout sessions all day long about this. It's a Saturday. Um, I want to say it's 10. Yeah. So um, we're not asking anything of you guys just to let you know that we're doing it. What we'd like to do is open it up to every district in the Cass County because we feel so strongly that it's time that uh, schools, communities, and everybody get together on this initiative. You know, how many of you have gotten a call and it's so, you know, everyone says, well, the school district needs to do something. Well, the schools can't do it all. It's got to be churches, parents, PTAs, and everybody's got to get involved. And that's why we're putting this together. First 300 people.
people, you can get to it from a link at the Raytech uh, School Board site. First 300 people were buying lunch for First 300 people were paying for daycare. Um, <laughs> both school districts are paying for this out of their budget. Um, and so <coughs> we just thought it was a good time for everybody in Cass County to get involved. I'd like you to share it with your principals, share it with your staff, share it with anybody who would like to come. It's important enough that we back up the need to come down and see. Thank you. So, uh, Jerry, we will be um, uh, working with our uh, PR, <coughs> Jill Filer, our PR person, and getting this information out via our social media and things like that. To everybody. Perfect. So. If you need this in digits, um, please contact our board secretary. Okay. We already have yep. it. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. we do. So any questions that I can answer, I'm not the, I'm just a, the person that, 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 that felt like it was in need. If you have any questions. And while I'm here, if you have any questions about Cass County Kids First, I can answer those as well. So. Thank you right. very much. Well, thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry, yeah. I just, uh, for everybody else's general knowledge, Chad and I chatted with Jerry three or four weeks ago at, at the at, uh, School District. Thank you. I have so much trouble with those acronyms. But at, uh, <coughs> anyway. <laughs> One of the reasons Jerry came tonight is uh, Chad and I had an opportunity to visit with him whenever that meeting was. And there were two or three other board members just, you know, standing around pre-meal chatting and and they were oozing passion over this and that got that got my attention and did a little bit more listening and and I just wanted to mostly say thank you please pass on our thanks just as citizens to the members of your board and the mm -hmm. RAPEC board that you're in contact with that are putting this together I, yes. this is the kind of stuff we need and and I, I appreciate your willingness so, yep. mm -hmm. so please join Great. us as much as you can thank you thank you, thank thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, moving on to assessment and evaluation of district programs. Kathy. Revenues. Revenues recorded for the general fund and special revenue fund exceed those of FY17 by uh, just a little over 1% or 228000 at the end of November. Expenditures mirror those of the operating funds. We're within about 40000 of last year for the same time period. Uh, looking at capital projects expenditures, those do exceed budget, and we knew they were going to. We didn't have all the roof repairs budgeted, so you'll be seeing a budget amendment coming for that. Uh, general fund expenditures are under the calculated percentage of 42% for this period. Total cash and investments are about $6.1 million. Questions? Um, the next item is mid-year personnel review. There was a mid-year personnel review that was held during the executive session prior to the regular meeting. And uh, transportation. Uh, the transportation program review is, is there. Um, our goal is to transport students safely and efficiently to and from school and all school activities in compliance with statutes, regulations, and board policy. Um, we're currently in our first year of a five-year contract with Durham. Um, have a great relationship um, working with them. Um, besides, I'm not just going to read the report, but um, last week they actually had a representative from their corporate office, office down and met with the mayor and myself, um, kind of shared some information about Durham <laughs> and all the, the safety initiatives that they have on the buses. And it's amazing um, what they, uh, the technology that's involved in providing safe transportation um, for our students. So um, many different strengths of the program and um, kind of the concern is just uh, making sure that we can keep drivers and driver turnover um, it's um, you know uh, that's a concern I think everywhere every community I'm in I see buses with uh, the flyers on the side of it that we need drivers so um, any questions I know that we had rolled out earlier the app Correct. where people could track <laughs> stuff like that do you know how many people have enrolled or how that? No. Um, anything from the community? No, I don't. Um, and I'm not sure if we can track that 100%. Um, if Wanda can. Um, that was, I, 
I don't think I got an answer to that. I asked um, the Durham corporate lady that she was down here, kind of asked her about that, um, said that we were using it. Um, the little feedback I have had has been positive, and I know I use it so um, periodically, and it's been good for that. And I've had people say they use it in the morning especially, and I think as it gets colder um, <laughs> and kids are waiting out there to the bus, I think parents will want to have that. So we'll do another push. Um, in, in the spring with just some bus information um, periodically, um, having some information. Um, I talked to um, that CEO and mentioned just having a um, Durham having a, a little one minute video just face that can go out on Facebook and out on social media to show parents what they have to do. I mean, the safety checks are, are very in depth. Um, and so I think we should all, as parents and, and patrons in our community, um, be um, thankful for the program and what they have going. I think, and I think programs like that are slow to catch on, and more people and more, and you have to right. keep continuing yeah. every year. To, but I think that they build and building, people get to where they depend on them eventually. Durham is in the process. They will be rolling it out here pretty soon, and we'll give information when they do, of a program that will allow communication and comments to be made from patrons and public to directly to Durham. So they're working on that process. In, in your review of the, the transportation program, was there any review of the cost? And is that cost coming down? Is there any cost-saving measures? I have, I did not, not this we, year. We are in the first year of a, of a new contract on that, and those, those, that's all set in the, in the contract. What I did mention was the efficiency rating, and I'm by far not an expert on that. I dug into that just a little bit to make sure that we're operating efficiency, uh, efficient um, based on the DESE standards, and that is 104% um, is the kind of the limit, and we're operating at 95.45%. So I took that as um, you want to be as close to 100 as you can is my understanding. But I'm going to learn a little bit more about that too. So. Board policy revisions. These policies were presented last month for your review. The administration, I believe we talked about this, has made some uh, <laughs> district, some modifications to policies D, J, F, F, E, F, and K, G, uh, which are attached in here. Um, the board is now asking approval for these changes. Can you enlighten me what the difference is between the D, J, F, policy for Harrisonville and what MSBA presented? Be a motion on the floor first. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I move to approve board policies DGA, EHB, EHBC, FED, FEE, IL, IGBE, KBA, KL, and KLA as presented by MSBA and board policies DJF, FEF, and KG with district modifications. Good job. Please. I'll have to Say second that. that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, Nancy, what was your question? Well, <coughs> now, now you remember? <laughs> I do remember because I write this down. Um, board policy DJF, FEF, and KG that were modified for the district, how are they different from what MSBA proposed? Well, if you look at, uh, for instance, uh, DJF, under competitive purchasing, you yeah. see the red line. It's all in red. It's all in red. Those were the ch modifications. I didn't. S okay, well, red did not show. Up. All I see is the yellow. Is it yellow? Uh, at the on bottom page of page three, three at, the at the very the bottom, bottom of page three. Uh, okay. It looks like this. Oh. All right. Hmm. Okay. And they should all be that same way. Like ones that are in the little red boxes. Mm -hmm. Or any that, those red are the changes. lines. Yeah. Kathy, do you want to speak to that at all? Is there some reason we had to change it for us? I mean, why Why did we have to do was it, that? It was to match our practice, wasn't it? Yeah. Our, uh, procedures. our procedures. Is it what we're doing? <coughs> really based on the federal guidelines, that 3,500. Uh-huh. And the 15,000, of course, we set ourselves. Right. And like in FEF, it says the lowest.
and best bid. We've always not necessarily taken the right. lowest, but and the best. Okay. And that, is that DJF? That's DJF. On DJF, where we say we're uh, required required to obtain three quotes, mm -hmm. change that from competitively bid, because we're actually not going out and bidding. We are calling for quotes on anything under 35. Okay. Great. Okay. Are there any others? Yeah. Yes. No. This okay. matches this, the audit that we just had. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, looks like a uh, yearbook contract. The um, recommended action there is to enter into a four year contract with Walworth for publication of the yearbook um, in the amount of 19000 for school year 2019 and maximum price increase of no more than 2% per year for each additional year. Um, Mr. Wiegers. Uh, High school principal and Brad Barbie, our yearbook advisor, uh, we're making this recommendation. Um, the terms of the agreement runs from 2019 to 2022. Uh, the staff did not look at other companies. His prior experience with the other vendor did not result in a satisfactory end product or cost. The other uh, would be uh, Jostens was the other other company yearbook company. These specifications are outlined in the purchase agreement attached. Um, after discussing the purchase with the auditors, Kathy, uh, we had Kathy, I asked her to call the auditors to make sure we were okay on this. They advised us that they would look to purchase on a per item basis, so $50 per book, rather than it being the $19,000. It's a, it's a per, item, or per item basis. That being said, uh, we would not be required to bid as this is well below our formal bidding threshold. So, said, however, since the contract exceeds 15000 approval a limit, um, there's a requirement that we obtain board approval. So, and Mr. Wiegers was successful in negotiating uh, a first year cost of nineteen thousand uh, from the proposed original proposed twenty thousand three hundred twenty six dollars. So I guess this outfit has a better track record than Jostens, apparently. Dr. Barbie likes the, the product better and their online management stuff. Mm -hmm. Is is Justin's the only other one that's that's out there? I think there's one other in Missouri Interstate that nobody probably nobody uses anymore. I don't have a date. Uh, my old district we used use Justin's and we moved to Walworth. I'm sure Mr. Barbie sent us homework, but has he seen the final product of both? So he's been able to. Um, the other thing, I, I, on the per item, do we said it was sixty three? Yes. Per yes. per book, um, the uh, the three hundred book contract at nineteen thousand, correct? Sixty three thirty or something like. Uh, the cost is made up two ways through advertising, and then the, then the rest of it is made up through the the cost of the book. The so. students still have they still put it together, right? Mm -hmm. Yearbook committee or yearbook group or whatever. Class. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to increase no more than 2% year over year for the next three years, four years. So, and I know I already asked this, but for the benefit of the group, uh, anyway, the four-year contract, albeit it doesn't sound like there's really any other competitors, four years for a service like this seems like an awful long time. Um, I always explain that the price the better price was made it advantageous to do a longer contract, and given that there's no other con or competition, that seems ill. But I, you know, that's kind of a concern, uh, at least going out that far for something like that. So. Wait, does Jostens? Jostens have those same types of contracts. I mean, multi-year. I have to say that it's probably one of the few books, hard books, that probably never will go away because everybody always wants to have that book That's in there years, years and years and years later. But the numbers actually are going down. Are yeah, they? From what they used to be, really? yeah. Yeah. Really? Hmm. Well, when so we were, you know, as adults now, we look back at yearbooks to see 
yeah. people we were in school with and so forth. When yeah, our kids are our age, they'll just look just on get their phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Uh, would you approximately 50 percent of the kids, 35, 60. Based on the roll, 300 or so. A third of them or so. And what if more want them than? Okay. First come, first serve. <coughs> They do place a second order. They no, have oh, they do yeah. place a second order. Oh, okay. They'll do so many overages. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know my yearbook staff this year and has been to, I don't know if it's the, if it's Wellsworth or if it's the actual publisher in Overland Park or Lenexa or wherever they are that she went and visited, but she was very impressed with, I mean, and she's a 17-year-old girl, but she came back to me and said, wow, they were so professional. They showed us they showed us tricks and they showed us how to do this right and then she gave me a tour of their software a couple of days ago of course I'm wowed by anything electronic <laughs> but it was it was pretty amazing I mean they can look at the thing on the, the mm -hmm. actual layout make changes and, and it's right there it's anyways I was impressed with Wellsworth from okay. a Go ahead, we need a motion a motion that we enter into a four-year contract with Wallsworth for publication of the yearbook in the amount of $19,000 for the school year 2019, a maximum price increase of no more than 2% per year for three additional years. I'll second. Okay. Motion seconding. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> okay. Any other reports? No. This okay. Uh, with that, I uh, need a motion to adjourn and reconvene. I move to adjourn and reconvene in closed session. Second. Okay. Nancy. Yes. Chris. Yes. Bing. Yes. Gina. Yes. Tina. Yes. RJ. Yes.